Welcome everyone, Christine here on Serious Gaming with the discussion about AMD's downfall in 2015 because things haven't been going very well for them on the GPU side of things uh, this year and the sky hasn't fallen yet, we haven't seen prices of GPUs rise because of this yet. They might, who knows what the future holds, but this year Nvidia has been dominating. Uh, in the first quarter of 2015, Nvidia stood at 77% market share. AMD 22 point something percent. Uh, in the second quarter, Nvidia was at 82%, AMD at uh, 18%. And now in the third quarter, AMD is at 18.8%. There's a margin er of error, by the way, to all of these. Uh, and while uh, Nvidia is at 81, just, just a bit over 81%. Uh, so Nvidia has over 80% of the market share. And we don't have the data for this quarter because this quarter, the fourth quarter hasn't ended yet. It's going to take some time, but I very much doubt it's going to change. It should have changed in the third quarter. In fact, I would have expected it to change in the third quarter because in the third quarter, well, in the second quarter at the end, they released their new graphics cards, uh, the Fury series, for instance. They released those at the end of second quarter, but it was too late to affect uh, market share for that quarter. In this quarter, uh, that impact should have been felt, but it's negligible. Less than 1% is nothing to celebrate about in AMD fanboys. It's really nothing to celebrate about. And Nvidia still has uh, the dominance over the GPU market uh, share. In fact, at this point, they're getting, they, they've got a monopoly. They're in the same position Intel is in this, on the CPU market versus AMD. That's exactly the position Intel is right there. And yet the sky hasn't fallen, the world hasn't ended. It might in a few years, because although Nvidia has won this year against AMD, they haven't gained market dominance. Like they've gained uh, a monopoly this year over market share for the correct cards that were sold this year. But overall, it's gonna take several years, two, three, maybe four, five years for Nvidia, if things keep going like they are right now, for Nvidia to actually gain, uh, be put in a position where 80% of all GPUs that are used are uh, Nvidia GPUs. And the reason Nvidia won uh, this year has actually less to do with the GPUs themselves, like, you know, the latest Fury cards by AMD compared to the latest GeForce cards by uh, NVIDIA, the Maxwell cards, performance-wise. So performance-wise, they're pretty much similar. In fact, people were disappointed that uh, the Fury lineup actually had the same performance as the Maxwell lineup. They needed, and AMD needed more performance to win on that level. If the performance is same, it's the price is similar for the higher-end cards, and it was pretty much exactly the same price, then you need to do something different. You need to have features, you need to have a perception among the public to be able to win this war. Uh, to, to be well able to win the competition, basically, to get more market share. And the reality is AMD doesn't have a good perception. They're doing badly financially, whereas in NVIDIA is turning a big profit. Their, their, their company is at risk. There's the perception of them having worse drivers in NVIDIA. NVIDIA is seen and is perceived true or not, I can make an argument why it's true, but that doesn't matter. What matters is that they're perceived by a very large number of people as offering more than AMD. And that's just really the situation. You've got GeForce Experience, which is better than AMD Raptor. You've got NVIDIA Shadowplay, which is considerably better than the alternative. Yes, you know, both of them are recording programs with a small performance, but Shadowplay is just offering more and more features and the latest version offers 1080p streaming at 60 FPS to both Twitch and YouTube, uh, and that's great. And it, and at an even higher bit rate, it's just getting better and better. The uh, uh, UI while you're streaming is not as great on Nvidia than with Raptor, but it's so much easier to use um, Shadowplay than it is to use Raptor. And that's one factor. Most people probably don't care about that because they don't care about that situation. But you know, just GeForce experience itself. Uh, the drivers as well, you know, people have that perception over the drivers. And then on top of this, and I think this is probably one of the main factors here, why NVIDIA won, because if you're going to have GPUs that offer the same performance, it's about the same price point, then it's also marketing. In terms of marketing, NVIDIA made deals with CD Projekt for The Witcher 3 to be bundled together with uh, GeForce graphics card, so you, you could get The Witcher 3 for free uh, this year if you bought it with a... Uh, 
NVIDIA graphics card, then they bundled it with Arkham Knight. That didn't work well because Arkham Knight was a piece of shit. Um, then it was Metal Gear Solid 5, and that's a really big game. I'd argue that's pr a far bigger game, actually, than The Witcher 3. Sure, Witcher 3 won Game of the Year at the Video Game Awards, but Metal Gear Solid on PC is a big fucking deal. The fact they got that deal was actually quite important uh, for NVIDIA. And just the perception of people when it comes to NVIDIA is far better than the perception of people when, um, you know, when it comes to AMD. People perceive AM NVIDIA as being the better choice, and it's really hard to argue on that. You know, they just offer more things. You know, they offer more things. It, at least this year, they offered better game bundles. I personally got the GeForce 980, and I got the Witcher 3 like that with my 980. And, you know, as a YouTuber, you probably look at many streamers, big streamers, big YouTubers. You ask what computer they have. Most of them will probably, the vast majority, in fact, will probably tell you it's an NVIDIA graphics card. And there are good reasons behind that, you know. There are good, very solid reasons behind that. People say, oh, you don't need shadow play or anything like that. Well, here's the thing. AMD Raptor runs on NVIDIA cards. So if I want it, I can get it as an NVIDIA user, whereas shadow play doesn't. It's, it's not an artificial... Uh, well, it runs worse, though, on NVIDIA cards, and the performance is uh, worse. And AMD Raptor is actually very unstable compared to Shadowplay. Like, Shadowplay is a very stable program. And that's one of my reasons. Like, Shadowplay is the best recording program out there in terms of performance loss, uh, in terms of just how well it handles, how easy it is to use. And just overall, I, you know, I've been doing playthroughs, I've been doing YouTube videos for over five years, and I've used a lot of recording programs over the years, and I think Shadowplay is just the best one out there. That's kind of, you know, that's kind of telling that you have dedicated programs by companies who make them and they're just worse than what NVIDIA is able to offer. And it's just getting better and better. They are adding more features uh, to to this. So perception is important. Uh, hardware is important. And obviously being able to invest in more money into actually making the hardware great, as NVIDIA does versus AMD, they're spending more money on making better GPUs. They're working with developers. They've got a good report with a lot of developers. They're putting the te technology, even though it works on AMD cards, they're putting their technology uh, in in games and that gets marketed. So people, you know, want to get an NVIDIA card because of that. So, you know, that obviously has paid off. Now, I don't think prices will rise for uh, the next lineup of cards. I think NVIDIA is going to keep prices as they are. I don't think prices are going to rise. I think prices are going to be stagnant, just like they are on the CPU side of things. They're not going to go down. They're not going to go up. That's not a bad thing. Um, and, you know, things on the CPU side of things are not actually bad. People say, oh, it's stagnated. Performance hasn't really increased. But performance hasn't really increased on the CPU side of things, not because, the, not because Intel hasn't done anything with CPUs. It's rather because developers, game developers, don't actually use the full power of CPUs uh, effectively because they have to make games that run a, on a wide range of CPUs and they have to... Uh, most of the best-looking games, the most demanding games, are actually multi-platform titles. Very rarely will you see a very demanding, good-looking PC game, PC-exclusive. Very, very rarely. Like Star Citizen is the exception, but Star Citizen runs quite well. And even with PC-exclusives, you still have to make the game run on i3s and i5s relatively well, so... Uh, you have to take that into consideration. Like, developers are not using the power of CPUs. That's the problem. With GPUs, you can see improvements in terms of performance. You can run games at higher resolution. It's working. Uh, but there's other factors as well there. You know, I I think performance is going to increase marginally next year with Pascal. But that's just my take. NVIDIA has promised big things, though, with their next lineup card. So has AMD. Like, they've both, both promised big. And... I'm really curious to see who will deliver, if both of them deliver, if one of them delivers. I'm really curious to see that. What I'm personally interested in, uh, besides performance, I'm interested in form factor. I'm interested in heat. I'm interested in cooling. Yeah, you know, water cooling is something quite a number of people use, but it's something quite a few people are not comfortable uh, comfortable with using, including myself. I'm not happy with the idea of using water cooling in my computer. But I do want a card that doesn't get as hot as my current GPU does. Like, the hottest component in my computer by far away is my GPU. It's also the loudest as a result of that. So I'm interested in seeing what NVIDIA is able to do. And NVIDIA has d did something incredible this year, as far as I'm concerned. They made a mobile GPU for laptops. They made it to the same performance as desktop 
uh, GPU. Same model, right? I believe it was a 980 that they put on a laptop and they got on a mobile G a GTX 980, they got the same performance as a desktop 980 and that's incredible. That's a really positive step forward. Now with Pascal, they're promising better form factor, uh, better heat, better power, all that. And you know, and other f uh, things as well. So is AMD promising quite a few things uh, as well with their next lineup of cards. Who will win? Well, remains to be seen, but if the cards are similar, if they offer the same in terms of performance or cooling or uh, power management, then I still think Nvidia is going to maintain its market uh, dominance, its monopoly on the market. Because if you're only going to be able to match Nvidia, then you're not going to get to anywhere. You need to beat Nvidia, you need to be better than Nvidia, or you need to get better marketing. It's difficult to compete with Nvidia for AMD because they just have less money to spend on this. Uh, like their AMD's entire business, which includes the CPU side of things, uh, and the CPU side of things is far bigger than the GPU side of things. Their entire business is generating almost the same amount of money as Nvidia generates, like overall, the overall revenue in terms of profit. Nvidia generates far more profit uh, than AMD does. AMD is actually in the negative, so that's one problem uh, for them. Well. Good job, AMD. You took ATI. You did a fucking terrible job with them. That's, you know, AMD has never been that great. And people say, oh, we need the competition. Well, we need better competition. We need someone to actually compete. AMD is just not capable of doing that. I don't think a monopoly is going to destroy the GPU market. I think there's cer certain interests in uh, maintaining the prices. And obviously, Nvidia is not going to do it. You know, several years down the line, we can see what they'll do. If we'll see if they actually raise prices or you know just not improve anything, we'll see about that years down the line. But for now, there's nothing to worry about for now because sure they've dominated, uh, they've gotten a monopoly in terms of the sales this year, but the overall the entire and the overall market AMD still has a bigger presence, not that much bigger, you know, not that huge still i think it's what 30 percent amd at the moment in the overall marketplace um but still you know it's something nvidia has to take into consideration i i'm not sure what nvidia's plan is i'm not sure what their end game is but for them their current business model is very very profitable something that people need to take into consideration when, when they're saying oh they're just going to increase prices or something like that why would they they're generating a lot of money as is right now. They're at their best point. They're at a very good point. I wouldn't say best point because I don't know their history, but they're at a very good point as a company right now. So why would they change their business model? Why would they do things differently than what they've been doing right now? They're going in a positive direction and they're doing a lot of things right. So, you know, if they keep going in this direction, they'll gain a full blown monopoly, perhaps even more than 90%. Who knows how uh, things will look in a couple of years. Anyway, that's all I had to say. The the data actually came out in November, but I was uh, early November, but I was quite busy back then with other stuff uh, that came around, and I only saw this very recently. So, but I just wanted to talk about it, concerning you know the importance of this in the overall uh, situation. I'm really hoping that Pascal actually delivers, that the 1000 series that Nvidia has promised us will actually deliver on their promises. In terms of performance, in terms of heat, in terms of form factor, but we'll have to wait and see. And hell, you know, if AMD delivers, well, that might just be a good thing. We shall see. Costine here on Serious Gaming, signing out. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video.